We are standing in the bushland behind the old Red Dixon home. It's the 28th of August 2017. The area has just been burnt off, so it's a good opportunity to see evidence of what has been called the Pukamani burial ground for the Tiwi people when this was all part of Bagot Reserve. Um, I'm with David Percival. What's the interest in the ironwood trees, David? Okay, so these are very old ironwood tree stumps. They've been cut with an axe. And my guess is that Pukamani poles were made from those trees. So you do expect to find more like this in this block? I think so, yes. Well, let's have a look. This, this actual corner of the um, Cullalup lease on Totem and Dick Ward Drive has got more ironwood than any of the other part of the lease. Yes. In fact, we have a little a depression here which is almost the size of a grave, but no evidence of it. Definite cut marks there. That's been cut with an axe, Bill. Yes, and someone who knows what they're doing. And that's a that's a big heavy ironwood tree, that one. Could they some of them have been knocked over by the cyclone? No. Usually cyclone blown trees, ironwoods, don't get snapped off. The roots and all get pushed out and probably burnt since then? They get burnt, but it all depends. I mean, if the bushfire goes over them quickly, they won't get burnt so much. But this is certainly... This shows axe marks. See the angled cut. Why would someone cut such a big... Well... Iron would traditionally be in a useful top-end timber for construction work, fence posts, Pukamani poles. Uh, this watering can could come from Red Dixon home, next to another ironwood stump. They said stuff was blown through here in the cyclone. This is another fallen ironwood with obvious axe cut marks. Now that's an, an ironwood stump. I don't know what's happened to that. That could have been cut and then after 40 odd years it's just deteriorated in the centre there. Well there's no fallen logs so... Well that's, that's a good point that, that um, usually there would be some remnants of the log because they're so what about that weather and termite resistant? Yep, that's another one. And there's another one over there. Well, no sign of a fallen log here. And that's if you were going to cut that with an axe, that's about the height that you'd hit it. Yes.
and it's not snapped off. You can see it's it's not spiky enough to be naturally snapped. No. Cut with a chainsaw. This is ironwood, and someone's taken the the root pieces away. Yeah, even the roots. What would that be? Um, maybe for furniture. Mm, it would have been a long time ago because there's no yep. sign of it where it came out of the ground. Yep. Yeah, but there's lots of uh, gamba grass growing around here and it's all it added to the intensity of the fire. But the par palms and even this old milkwood never give up. They keep coming back each year. But there's no progress, it's just regrowth and burn. So would you say with some protection this regrowth would go ahead? Well, certainly, yeah, if, if proper custodianship of the land and some kind of appreciation that introduced grasses have to be removed, then this is really one of the thickest wooded, wooded part. It's known as Area B in the Planet Consulting Development Plans. What? They want to build another tropical petrol station. Standing back, doing the, so you know, an uppercut cut here. Yes. I mean, that's the pole there, though, look. Well, that's, well, that's a, an axe cut pole, but whether it's from that same... That looks a bit... No, no. But it looks... Well... I if you're going to cut through, you would always cut at an angle like that. Usually, yes. But if it, it's if there's been a lot of rain and sun on the actual cut part, it's going to going to remove those sort of traces. I mean, this is obviously at an angle. That's obviously at an angle there. Yes. What we're thinking is that. The tree was cut down there, and then it was this piece was cut again here. So there's the actual piece between here and here is missing, and could well have been used for a Pukamani pole. And that yeah. would have been the right width. And you could almost estimate its length by the circumference to of that. That to a certain extent, yes. That, uh, and then they've left this part because it was perhaps too too narrow a gauge not for straight. the commander pole. Not straight enough. They're always pretty straight. Yeah, this area is dotted by mounds. One over there where David's standing. <coughs> Totem Road in the background. So what have we here? Well, it's a quite a sturdy ironwood stump. It uh, shows axe cut marks here, here, of upward strokes. That's about the height that a, a man would, would cut a tree down with an axe. I'd say that was just about the right width and size. 
piece of timber for a Pukamani pole. And it would stand there for a long time, wouldn't it? The stump. The stump, oh yes. So it'd be a lot of work to cut through that, wouldn't it? Yes. You'd need to keep sharp resharpening your axe blade. You might have more than one person working on it at a time. So you'd need to have a good purpose for cutting it down. You're not just going to cut it down for fun. No, uh, and I would say expert axemen because there's not a you know, wrong cut. That's right, it? there's no accidental nicks and cuts Nothing. near that cutting it area. None of them show that. And this is an abandoned campsite over there is Karoo Park the site of the Retta Dixon, Retta Dixon home and now held by the Larrakia Development Foundation rented out for circuses visiting circuses that has a history that we should not forget. To some it would bring back painful memories. Yeah, I think this milkwood is a good symbol. Burnt every year but still surviving and struggling to survive. Just calling upon the keepers of the land to protect it from these wildfires caused by the introduced gamba grass. Hang in there Milkwood, we'll do our best.